מיסטר לורנסו ארטיסיו. Nice to meet you. שלום בועז. או, אתה יכול לדבר היברו. זה הדבר היחידי שאני יודע. It's the only word they should know, uh, and it's a good one. Thank you. Uh, listen, I came to this building. I'm sucking some historical vibes. This is the Alfa Romeo Museum, a very special place. Uh, this is a museum opened in 1976 and restored in 2015. And now there is on display a collection of 70 cars. 70 cars. Plus 200 more in our warehouse. Ah, okay. So altogether you have 270 cars, but uh, on uh, display 70 cars. I, I can show you our first car. Please, take me to the first car. The 24 HP. Let's go. Wow, what a beauty! Yeah, this is the first Alfa, manufactured in 1910. And it was uh, a great car, the top of the range at those days, with a straight four-cylinder, 42 horsepower, and a top speed of 100 km per hour. Even then, 100 km per hour, wow! But even fast. now, because the car is still running. This one? Yeah, even without brakes on front wheels, wooden wheels, uh, you need to put it in the water before driving them. And uh, the bodywork uh, was made by Castagna, one of the most famous uh, coach builders here in Milan. And it's the classic torpedo from that age. Which car are we going to see now? I think the best is to show you one of the icons of Alfa Romeo, the Giulia from the 60s. Giulia from the 60s, my love, Giulia. Every time I see a Giulia, my heart beats differently. Yeah, the Giulia is a very special car. In Italy it was the icon of the 60s. because icon. An icon, because it was the police car and also the criminal. <laughs> icon for the criminals as well. Uh, what's so iconic with this one? Um, the Giulia was something new, different from any other cars. And then it was really, really modern. The mechanical, uh, the, um, the mechanics was really uh, performing uh, and uh, refined, but also the bodywork was pretty new. It was one of the first design in the wind tunnel to be aerodynamic. Where do we go from now? Sorry, Julia, we have to go. Where do we go from now? We can start speaking about beauty with a special prototype. Special prototype? Yeah. Good. Uh, I had a story that you have some kind of... Uh, a surprise for me later, is it true? Yeah, we will have a, a special surprise. Wow, wow, wow! This is the beauty section. And this section is called the Master of Style, with all these one-off cars, one-off prototypes, representing the most important steps in car design history. Marcello Gandini, the chief of design for Bertone, designed the Carabo in 1968, the Stratos Zero in 69, the Lamborghini, yeah, and the Lamborghini Countach in 1970. And this uh, was uh, its uh, first example of sharp, geometric uh, supercar for the 70s. 68, that was the year that the car was presented. It's a one car and that's it. It's, a it's absolutely a one-off. This car is manufactured on the 33 Stradale chassis, ah. but it was so different, so modern for the time. Listen, even in this time, I can, I can feel the need for speed to get inside and drive it. There is a way to get inside? Yeah, there is a way. It's not so comfortable, but there is a way. Wow, Alfa Romeo 68 and it's working. It's working perfectly. Alfa Romeo 68 and it's working, friends, it's working. It's a two-seat car. It's a two-seat middle engine, V8. Mid-engine, yes. Uh, which engine? It's a V8 of two liters, 230 horsepower. And uh, maximum velocity? Uh, I heard about uh, 260. Ooh, okay. They never reach that speed because this uh, is uh, manufactured to be just beauty. So you said 260, but maybe you have a car that they can do more than 260? Yeah, of course, but uh, we need to change uh, our area, our section. From the emotions of beauty, we need to go to the passion of speed. Passion of speed is the story of my life, please. Let's go. <laughs> you can leave it open, it's okay. <laughs> Wow, tell me, this is the car of Nino Farina. 
It's the car that won the first F1 World Championship ever in 1950, winning 11 races on 11. 11 from 11. So it's only a winner car. It's a winner, it's unbeatable. Never, never a second place for this one. So this, this is the place where Nino Farina was sitting himself. It's the place where Nino Farina was sitting, where Juan Manuel Fangio was sitting. It was a, a, a very important place to sit. This one is working, this one is working. Uh, this is working and we also have a 159 working and this is a, such an amazing car with a, an incredible sound. It's a straight 8 cylinder, 1.5 liters with a root compressor. Wow! The Quadrifoglio has a special story and a special meaning for an Alfa Romeo enthusiast. For the first time it was painted on the bonnet of a car that took place in the 1923 Targa Florio. It was a luck charm. But after Ugo Sivocci won that race, that international, uh, incredible and terrific race, uh, that became the symbol of every racing alpha. Then became the symbol of the Alfa Romeo racing department and from the 60s was used to identify the top of the range of Alfa Romeo cars. There is a legend that before uh, Sivocci put the quadrifoglio on his car, he was a loser coming only second place and after he put the, the quadrifoglio then he became a winner and when he didn't put it on one time on the car he died in crash. No, this is just a legend. For it's a legend? <laughs> mm. Then behind every legend there is something true. There is a small truth. <laughs> there is small a small piece truth. Piece of truth. But okay. the importance is to have uh, the symbol of Alfa Romeo sporting heart. But I'm sure that you have some kind of affection to one of them. It's a difficult question because mm, every car is a part of Alfa Romeo history. But uh, actually, I'm in love with the Giulia GT. The Giulia GT? Yeah. Is that connected to uh, the surprise that you said that I might have? Not so connected, but there is something in common. Something, something in common? Do you, do you want this surprise, I think? Uh, yes, I'm just lifting you for the surprise and I'm waiting for you to take me to, to see the surprise. Okay, let's go. Let's go, let's go. Ah, Lorenzo, Lorenzo, what can I say? The perfect car for the perfect place in a race circuit. Wow, that's a present. This was a surprise. It's the biggest surprise of my life. The Giulia T Super, it was the race version with a quadrifoglio. And it's a quadrifoglio, Giulia. it's a pure quadrifoglio, yeah, original. It's a pure quadrifoglio. Original. It is the first time a quadrifoglio was put on a car. It was the first time that we're going to get wet in the uh, rain, so I Say, maybe we go inside. It's yours, please. My, I'm the driver. I hear it. I'm the driver. Yeah. You sure? Yeah, no. but slowly. No, you, you, you're going to be the driver this time. You're going to be the driver. I give you the pleasure. The Giulia T Super was the ready-to-race version of the Giulia sedan. When the Giulia was presented in 1962, it was a great touring car. But they want to create a version uh, ready to race uh, in uh, touring car category. The, the car has the legendary Bialdo, so the straight four cylinder twin cam and light alloy, 1.6 liters, 112 horsepower. Push, 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 push! Yes, the wheel is coming out! And again! Wow! Yeah! <laughs> It's amazing to understand that this was uh, the specs of the uh, original car, but uh, when it's tuned up uh, for racing, it reached 170 of power. Oh, it was a fantastic, fantastic day, and uh, I really, really want to thank you. I know you are not allowed to take the hands of the wheel, <laughs> but thank you very much. You're welcome, it was my pleasure. For everything, and please come to Tel Aviv. It's yeah. about time. With the Julia? Yes, let's go to Tel Aviv now with the Julia. Let's go.